Welcome back to the farmstead. We're glad you're here. In this video, part three, Bob takes us on a personal tour through the Blue Ridge Honey Company. Today we get to see the warehouse where all the equipment is stored. Bob talks about the pros and cons of both the Hummer Bee and the Swinger and which one fits his context. And then we go on a tour through the wood shop where we get to see the equipment used to make all the woodenware and also meet some of the guys behind the scenes to make all that happen. If you haven't already, be sure to check out parts one and two, as well as the interview and podcast we did with Bob at our website at naturesimagefarm.com. We hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. go through a lot of lids as you might imagine. Yeah. Uh, this is all caps for the honey pouring system. That half of the building is beekeeping, this half is uh, honey pouring. And this is all cylinders and bears and skeps. Like I say, everything light comes up here and everything heavy stays down there. So when a semi load of glass comes in, it stays down there because a pallet of quartz is like 2,000 pounds. Wow. Mm -hmm. In the winter time we paint up here, in the summertime we spray, you know, out in the yard. Mm -hmm. But this time of year we gotta keep it inside where it's warm. These are those double screen boards that you see in a couple of our videos. We sell them in the store. This is the most underrated piece of equipment for beekeepers. Once you learn how the benefits and how to use these double screen boards, it's just it's endless what you can do with them. These are the stands. These are used ones that came in that need overhauling. There's some tops. We like this beehive looking affair. Mm -hmm. You know, put a shelf on a beehive. And this is a very old one, so it's not as nice as the newer ones. They're wider and fit it better. But uh, anytime you can get one of those in a supermarket, this your sales are going to go up. Wow, look up, look at the view from up top here. Yeah, that's a nice view. That's about uh, two thirds capacity. And then there's these barrels over on that side. <clears throat> We go through a lot of honey. We packed a million and a half pounds last year. A million and a half pounds of honey. Yeah. Wow. I know, I even I still stand back and go, how do we do that? I did, we don't seem like we have that capacity, but it's all about those girls in that room. They're just tremendous. I mean, they go through so much product. They, we have it right now today, at this time period, we're averaging 50 drums a week. Can you imagine? From a guy that started in Oregon with eight hives. Crazy, isn't it? And to a million and a half pounds of honey. So they're taking this down so we can assemble. Or actually, she's going to bundle for the store. I know what she's up to. We sell a lot of this stuff in the store, too. We, we put it in bundles. Is this the color that you use? I do. I've used black, white, and yellow, and my, yellow is my favorite. I don't like white because the bees don't like it as well. Yeah. It doesn't get drawn out as well. And uh, <clears throat> this is going to sound very odd. The reason I don't use black is because we sell a lot of nukes and colonies. And black foundation looks old before it's old. You know, if you, if you yep. take a piece of black foundation that's uh, six years old, it looks like a pretty old frame. Yeah. So I, I like to use the yellow for that. So Plus, for some out. reason, you know, once they've laid in that a time or two, you know, seeing the eggs and larvae is not an issue anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just when it's just brand new that it can be a problem for new beekeepers. And even with my older eyesight, I, I've tuned into being able to see stuff in that yellow quite well. I have no problem with it. It's almost like there's something to the color yellow, Bob. There is, yeah. <laughs> We're back to yellow again. I like is this yellow. Cell? Yellow is one of my favorite colors. There are several good manufacturers in the country. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I'm just going to use two for an example. We used to buy a lot of date ant, uh, they call it Plastacell. Mm -hmm. And even before I was a Man Lake dealer, I started going back and forth and I picked up Man Lake. It didn't take me long to see that the bees took to this much better than the date ant. The cell is a little deeper and they do a little better job of waxing. For whatever reason, the bees do a better job with Man Lake than they do date ant. These are Man Lake. I use uh, those triangle boards for bee escapes myself a lot. It seems odd to see a commercial beekeeper using a triangle board, but as long as you're not traveling out of your area, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't want to take them to Florida and then have to go back three days later and get the supers, yeah. but as long as it's you know right here at home, it works hole. great. Yeah, I, I, I prefer doing that to using. Uh, fume boards and stuff like that. 
Well, one of the advantages to this, and this is something many people wouldn't focus on, you know, if you got a good plugged out super and you crack it open, there's honey just oozing all over the place, mm -hmm. gets over you, the truck bed. Yeah. Well, if you do it with the the uh, divide or the uh, escape boards, the bees have a chance to clean up all that mess before they vacate. So when you go back, it's bone dry. Mm -hmm. There's none of that oozing, messy honey. So I, that's one of the reasons I prefer it. And then also you can get in and out so fast without robbing. Yeah. Uh, it's already been dealt with. All you got to do is strip the supers and load them on the truck. And you can get through the yard twice as fast and robbing is minimal that way. What do you guys use to uh, move boxes and hives and things like that? To move boxes? Yeah. Out in the yard. Like the yeah, we have two. We have a, sw a swinger an older swinger that's had a factory rebuild and then we have a Hummer bee that's only about a year old and it's it, the, the, there's pros and cons to both of them the Hummer bee will lift more weight mm -hmm. and it's quieter and smoother but the old uh, swinger that I have uh, it the pedal is more sensitive you can when you're loading a semi or loading anything you can put that thing right on a pair Whereas with the Hummer Bee, you can't do that. You've got to be feather the pedal a little more. So when I load a semi truck, I like the old Swinger that was made in 1979 because mm. of the pedal. The pedal. Yeah. Did you ever use skid steers? A lot. Back in the Oregon days, that's all we had. Uh, nobody was using Swingers in the, well, I wouldn't say nobody, but very rare that you saw a Swinger in the early 80s. Everybody had different versions of a Bobcat. And I got broke in on a Bobcat 610. That was kind of an industry standard for a long time. And so much so that Bobcat actually made a forklift with beekeepers in mind. And it came out with that caster wheel on the back and it didn't have the, uh, the, the cage. You, you know, it was easier to see out of. You didn't have that cage around you where you couldn't see. And it came with a mast. It was made for beekeepers. Of course, other people bought it too, you know, landscapers and, uh, other people that wanted an off-road forklift, but it worked pretty good. But the Swinger's better because anybody can get on a Swinger or a Hummer Bee. To be really proficient on a Bobcat takes practice. Mm -hmm. You can ruin something real quick with a Bobcat <laughs> if you don't yeah. have a little skill. Yeah, I did. Anybody can get on a Swinger. I Plus, Swingers don't turn up the earth like a Bobcat does. Um, the Bobcats, you know, when you're turning, it, it tears You're breaking, up. I just, yeah, it just... Yeah, it tears things up unless ruts. it's really smooth ground and the caster wheel doesn't tear things up. But the Swinger doesn't do that, and that's the other reason I like a Swinger. Yeah. And plus, we're in the mountains. Or we have a hard time finding a really good level spot, and the Bobcats uh, don't do as well on, on level ground. You know, roots and rocks screw them up a lot easier than the Swinger. British this church. is an old Swinger. This is from the uh, late 70s. And, uh, I bought it in its original condition. It came with a bucket and all of that, and then I sent it to A&O Forklift, and they did a factory overhaul and turned it into a forklift, which was very common. In the old days, swingers didn't come out with a mast on them. You had to convert them, and this is a conversion. And they, It had a Renault engine in it out of the factory, believe it or not, and we had a little Kubota four-cylinder put in it. And, had it completely redone, frame up overhaul, and it's been a really neat little forklift. I really liked it. It won't lift as much weight as the Hummer Bee does. This one's good for about 15 to 1800 pounds. The Hummer Bee will lift a tote of syrup, which is can be 3000 pounds. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> the wood shop's down there too. I don't know if you're interested in that. Yeah, I love woodworking. Okay. So this is John, that's Seth, which you see on the videos a lot. And EJ's been in one or two. How you doing? Hey. EJ's a, a, you too. EJ is a frame building machine. It looks like it. It is unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> so John's cleaning out some used packages, which we will use. It's a nice big jig. When did we cut it? Basically, two pieces. 50. And you're going to miss a staple every now and again, but just keep going and fix it when you put the foundation in. If I know I missed it bad, I'll drop another one in it. How old's that saw? 1948. 48. So as old as my gramps. And that's something I learned from Glenn in Oregon. He had a nice stop system, and you can uh, 
you set them wherever you want. I see. So it's just a track you put on your outfeed, and then yeah, like say you want to use that one. Yep. Just run it up there, and the other one swing in. That saves a lot of time. Having good equipment makes it so much quicker and easier and smoother. <clears throat> this isn't the best table saw you can buy, but it's definitely not a cheap contractor saw. When, you, when we have them sharpened, they put this plastic whatever, oh. or what, actually I think it's wax or something. Okay. Just keeps the sharp edges. You can cut yourself on those when they're brand new. Uh, yeah, sharpen, you know. stops it from rusting. And, okay. so we go through a lot of blades, and then we yeah. have a shop you know, a couple hours away. He comes through here with a van every week and picks up and drops off. And so we go through a lot of blades. Yeah. Was there something early on when you were still, let's say, a hundred hives or less that were huge, like what I call a force multiplier? Well, I don't know if this is the right answer, but eventually I had to learn to let other professionals do things ah. rather than taking a day to create something and save the money when I could have let a professional do it. And my time, that's when my time became valuable and I thought, I need to let somebody else do this and use my time in a place where it's uh -huh. going to make me money. I can make money with my time that'll more than pay for letting, allowing a professional to do the job. Does right. Make, does that make it sense? Sure it does, because you're also yeah. supporting that other professional. Yeah. Uh, that's right. That's a great... I mean, I used to do all great... my own plumbing and electrical, everything, work on all my own trucks, but it, it's time consuming, and now uh, I'm better off just being a beekeeper, which is what I do best, right. and making money at beekeeping, and let somebody else wire the new shop, you know? Right. Yeah. That's great advice. We hope that you've enjoyed this video series with Bob Benny. I'm going to give a special shout out and thank you to Bob and all the folks behind the scenes for sharing what exactly it takes to make something like the Blue Ridge Honey Company successful. I also want to thank my son, Jake Burns, for filming and editing and posting these stories to our YouTube channel for folks like you at home to be able to see and enjoy them. Now, Bob and I went on a trip after we shot these where we filmed some really incredible beekeepers doing what they do best, beekeeping, talking about life, and getting a little better understanding on what it takes for other commercial outfits to be successful. You can check out those videos on Bob's YouTube channel, at Bob Benny. Sharing stories like this is important. Getting voices out to be heard is important. It's also important to pass that torch onto the next generation and also be the lighthouse to somebody along that their way. Help somebody out when you can. And I think that's one thing I've really picked up on uh, when spending time with Bob is he's very gracious and humble and really does want to help people and see folks do well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video series and we're looking forward to bringing you some more in the future. So as always, be the lighthouse. We'll see you next time. Hey, can you help us out? Hit like, subscribe, share with all your friends, and be sure to check these great videos out too.